and hate groups have no place in our city. Violence has no place in our city. We will not tolerate acts of violence. Promises made Friday by Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler ahead of planned protests across Portland, ending with scenes like this and gunfire. We are putting the pieces together tonight, clip by clip and account by account after covering events on the ground and despite limited police response. At 10 o'clock, I'm Jeff Gianola. And I'm Elizabeth Din. Let's get straight out to our Jenny Young, who covered these events on the ground just yesterday. Jenny, you weren't the only one. That's right. Uh, our news partners at the Portland Tribune, their reporter, Zane Sparling, was also covering these events. And we saw Zane uh, downtown in northeast Portland and then back again all over the place. Uh, really, really doing a great job covering this. And, you know, the leaders of Portland knew that this was there was a high risk of this being volatile. And Mayor Wheeler told the city to choose love. Well, as Sparling noted, they did not. It was tunnel vision for me, Jenny. When I saw that first gun, I could not take my eyes off it out of my own fear for my safety and for those around me. Sunday afternoon, Portland Tribune reporter Zane Sparling found himself just yards away from a man armed with a handgun opening fire across a street in downtown Portland. We could have seen a political murder again on the streets of Portland. According to Portland Police, Anderson, more cell phone video shows another angle of the terrifying moments. Anderson crouching behind a trash can, aiming the gun. It's unclear if he fires again before he takes off running. But take a look at this video. It wasn't long before he was on the ground, surrounded by Portland police officers. Once it was over, Sparling talked to witnesses who said it started when Anderson had a gun out in front of left-wing protesters who began following him. But we don't know if what his ideology was. I think it's fair to assume that he was there angry or upset with the uh, left wing. According to an arrest affidavit, Anderson told police he was near NATO Parkway and Taylor Street when he was confronted by two people dressed in black, pointing guns at him, telling him to leave. He said they followed him for five blocks and told him they were going to shoot him. Anderson said he shot once in their direction. It was only later reviewing the footage that I realized that this was an exchange of gunfire. And I think I would have acted differently if I had realized that there were bullets going. Sparling saw bystanders and people eating outdoors run for cover. Fortunately, police say no one was injured. But as I've heard many Portlanders say, who has to die in order for the violence to stop? The reason that no one was, as far as we know, harmed during the shootout isn't because they were crack shots or because they were being careful, it's because we were lucky. And if these types of potentially deadly confrontations keep happening, somebody's luck is going to run out. Wow, so scary to think about those stray bullets because we know many people have been hit and even killed by stray bullets in Portland uh, this last year. So. An investigator said today there is evidence a second gun was fired at that incident. We had crews downtown. I was downtown. I can confirm that there was no police presence, visible police presence, that is, until after those shots were fired. We were also in northeast Portland. No visible police presence there, even during a brawl between the left and the right. So, Jeff Liz, we'll send it back to you reporting live tonight. Jenny Young, Coin 6 News. Yeah, great.